What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG. Big dogs. Gotta eat. Waiver wire video. We let it simmer. We let it fester for a little while because there's a lot of fuckery going on in this week. In particular, COVID. And by fester, I mean we release it a little bit later. And by releasing a little bit later is because I forgot to do it at halftime of last night's game, uh, which brought some injuries as well, which is going to impact today's video. Here's the first thing I would say to y'all. I would get into the group chat right now of your league because it's very clear that COVID somehow is impacting this NFL season 10 times more than when COVID was impacting the rest of the world to an exponential degree of 10. Okay. So all of COVID last year combined to be like 4% of what it's doing to the fantasy football season right now. And the way we combated this in, in the leagues that I play in is this. We have our normal IR spots, right? In, in your leagues, you might have one IR spot. You might have two IR spots. It doesn't matter. So for what we do, we open up the IR spots to unlimited number of spots, okay? However, as the commissioner, the rule is you are only allowed to, depending on however many you normally had, right? If it was one, then it's one. If it's two, then it's two. You're only allowed to put one non-COVID player into the IR, right? So if someone breaks his leg, gets put on the IR, you're allowed to put him in the IR. But if your normal rule is having one IR spot, then you're not allowed to pile on multiple IR spots on top of that, although we've opened the entire IR slot thing, if that makes any sense. I don't think I'm explaining this well. Basically, we're allowing unlimited number of COVID players to hit the IR spot, okay? So we're going to open it up to 10 IR spots, all right? But still only one of them can be injury related. The rest of them have to be COVID if you're going to pile on more than one of them, all right? So as a commissioner, I'll go around once every few days, just look at the rosters, make sure no one's fucking cheating. And if they are, then I manually just drop one of the players. That they, I, I, I dropped someone from a, from a roster this morning. Someone had both Calvin Ridley and Chase Edmonds on the IR. We've made the rule very clear. This is not the first time it's happened this year. So I just chucked Calvin Ridley off of his roster. So if you have one IR spot normally, I would see if everyone wants to open it up because things are getting crazy right now. The new variant's super contagious, and we're going to have a lot of players where, you know, COVID hits very randomly. Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, Sunday mornings and shit. You play the entire year and you got the fantasy playoffs coming up and then all of a sudden you're not going to be able to like have a starter ready to go or you don't want to drop one of your best players. Open up the IR spots for as, as large of a number as you possibly can, but only allow the new spots to be open for COVID players. Long-winded way of saying that. So just get your league to agree on that. I know a lot of them are probably going to be, that nah, doesn't fucking matter. All right, we're going to talk about week 15 waiver wire. Before we do so, y'all know the rules. Let's tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. The uh, in-depth waiver wire article, as well as the fab guidance sheet, ranking sheet, is up on the website right now, bdge.store forward slash community. It'll also get you into our Discord. It'll get you into my best ball leagues when I drop the invites. It'll get you into our dynasty leagues in the offseason when you want in. This league uh, is kind of just headlined by basically one player. It's Rashad Penny of the Seattle Seahawks. Now, he pops off for just career highs across the board. Ends up carrying the ball 16 times, 138 total yards, two touchdowns, nearly 27 PPR points. So, again, career high in snaps and yards and all this kind of shit. And now Pete Carroll said he's earned the starting role. Obviously, I mean, it doesn't take much to earn the starting role from a guy like Alex Collins, who's been going like seven for 11 on the ground in like 72 consecutive weeks. Adrian Peterson hurt his back, whatever. A lot of nonsense going on, but Rashad Penny's clearly going to be the guy. This is going to be a much tougher matchup coming up, obviously, against the Rams. All right, so it's not the Houston Texans. We can't expect the same output, but they do get Chicago and they do get the Detroit Lions in those following weeks. So he could still be a very, very big player in your fantasy playoffs. So Rashad Penny's the number one priority this week. If you have the number one spot, you use it on him. If you have any fab left, you probably use that on him as well because we all need running backs at this point in the season. Behind him, it's tough because Miles Sanders and Austin Eckler are both expected to play this week, which wipes off Justin Jackson, Josh Kelly, Boston Scott, Jordan Howard, Kenny Gainwell. The one player I would still think about maybe throwing like five bucks at or 5% at whatever you want to you know, decipher this as is Jordan Howard. I think Jordan Howard has a double digit touch role, possibly a goal line role whenever Miles Sanders gets back, if he is back this week, regardless. So he's the only one I would could probably still consider edible right now out of that you know, all those committees and shit like that. Austin Eckler plays on Thursday. So we'll know like relatively soon whether or not you can pick up the other guys. If Austin Eckler for some reason like has a setback or, you know, it swells up and he can't go, Justin Jackson's my preferred guy. They are going to be in a committee regardless though. So it kind of caps the upside and it makes the situation a little bit more uncertain regardless. Okay, let's continue down the running back hole. 
So Craig Reynolds is a guy that I talked about in the live stream yesterday and I got hella excited about for some reason. Craig Reynolds of the Detroit Lions. Now, I heard today or I saw today that there were suggestions that um, both DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams might miss this upcoming game again. OK, I think it's pretty it's a pretty sure thing that DeAndre Swift is probably going to miss week 15. Jamal Williams though, got put on COVID IR. Apparently, though, there's a, a very high likelihood that he also misses this upcoming game. That would leave Kirk Reynolds in line to be the feature workhorse again. OK, and he led the team in snaps, 46 percent of the snaps. And that will probably only go up as he performed really, 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 really well. They get Arizona this upcoming week, then Atlanta, then Seattle. So a pretty good schedule going forward. And I actually I, I like him as a as a nice sneaky ad. So Kirk Reynolds is probably my running back two on the week as far as these pickups are concerned. I know a lot of people are going to write them off because they never heard of them. But as I mentioned in yesterday's live stream, Adam Schefter came out on Sunday and was like really excited about Craig Reynolds for whatever fucking reason he has inside information, apparently, right? And he, I like in the situation of how he felt about Craig Reynolds this week to how he felt about Elijah Mitchell in week one, which is a pretty hefty, lofty comparison. And it turned out to be extremely fucking accurate. And now I feel like this is not a guy that you want to let slip by. It's not a guy that you're going to have to put a lot of money on, but it's a guy that you probably want to have on the back of your roster because in case uh, if he has another good game this week against uh, Arizona, then he's probably the starter against Atlanta and Seattle for the last two weeks of the season. And you probably want that guy, especially if he gets more involved in the passing game and becomes like the DeAndre Swift role there. Uh, he's going to be super, super valuable. The rest of the guys at the wide receiver position, like KJ Osborne is probably owned already, but if not, he would be my top guy. He's going to be a, a clear like flex play as long as Thielen is out. I'm on Ross St. Brown is super interesting. He's been getting a ton of targets in Detroit. They're not a lot of valuable targets, but as long as Swift is out, Jamal Williams is out, TJ Hawkinson, I don't really know what the fuck his deal is with the hand injury. So if he's out again, too, this becomes like a, an easy eight to nine target guy in Amon Ross St. Brown. The ceiling's not really there, but like if you're going to get 14, 15, 16 PPR points out of Amon Ross St. Brown, I mean, fucking fire him up. You know what I'm saying? Gabriel Davis is also really interesting because Emmanuel Sanders is going to be out for multiple weeks. And he had a season high in or actually, I think a career high in, in snaps in routes run, uh, scored touchdowns in multiple games in a row is going to be a very, very big part of this offense, obviously, going forward. And he's attached to Josh Allen. Now, I want to talk about Josh Allen for a second, because for those y'all in super flex leagues or one quarterback leagues, I think this needs to be on your radar, right? We have two big injuries this week at the quarterback position. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen. Now, Lamar Jackson's got the low ankle sprain. Apparently, it's not serious and he should be fine for week 15. His mobility might be limited a little bit, but he seems good to go. Now, Josh Allen is also considered day to day with like a foot sprain or something. I'm only technically doctors, so I can't really speak on this, right? But Dr. Jesse Morse, the GOAT, is having a little bit of pessimism here. Uh, he says, I have a feeling they are undercalling this Josh Allen injury, and I'm curious to see how the next 14 days plays out. I think he has a midfoot Liz Frank sprain. I think Bills Mafia, Trubisky can help them win three or four. Carolina, Atlanta, New York Jets. Be smart here. Best case scenario, Allen plays week 15 with a carbon fiber insert, doesn't run as much and comes out of the game without worsening the injury. That is very plausible. I'm just thinking out loud. He thinks the injury is probably worse than they are letting on. Now, Allen did play most of the game. Uh, he did play the second half of the game. So, that would suggest that he's probably okay to suit up, but it's also possible that it just doesn't happen. So I just want you guys to be prepared. If you're in a super flex league and you have Josh Allen, I, despite the good reports, I would just pick up Mitch Trubisky in case. Okay. And if you're not, even if you're in a super flex league and you need quarterback help, or if you're playing against Josh Allen, me against one chains who has him, I would still probably throw a couple dollars at Mitch Trubisky just to make sure that whatever's happening with Josh Allen, your ass is covered what else do we got here i mean we could talk about like royce freeman who's might be like the starter in houston because philip Lindsay's out david johnson's out but he was out with covid and he might be back the miami situation is also kind of fucked because we had miles gaskin and salvin Ahmed go on the covid ir list last week so both of them have an equal shot to return this upcoming week it's kind of just like a dice roll we have no idea which one of them is going to come out philip Lindsay. It, oh no, Philip Lindsay's on Miami, my bad. But Philip Lindsay got put onto the COVID list or hurt or something. I don't know what the fuck happened. Philip Lindsay's not going to be playing this week. Royce Freeman is on Houston, and I'm talking about Miami right now. This dude, oh, this COVID shit has got me fucked up. Miami. Malcolm Brown should be back this week, though. If Malcolm Brown is not ready to go, they are probably going to promote Duke Johnson and Jared Dokes off of the practice squad. Now, Jared Dokes is like a super interesting, he was a super interesting prospect. He was kind of a, a little bit buzzy in the Dynasty Twitter community. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him get some run, but he's gotten no run up to this point in the season. So that probably kind of tells you what they think about him from now on. Uh, same thing with Duke Johnson. Like, let's not get crazy excited because they also haven't used him yet at all. So they're not crazy excited about him. Malcolm Brown would probably be the guy, but I can't imagine anyone in this backfield being looked at as anything more than like a shitty, shitty RB3. Probably like Malcolm Brown, if he's back, I'll probably rank him like RB37 or some shit. Honestly, I'm if I have a luxury bench spot, 
I might throw it at Salvin Ahmed because Miles Gaston's not going to be available in your on your waiver wire. If Salvin Ahmed clears the COVID list and Gaskin doesn't, there's a good chance that Ahmed becomes like the workhorse there in Miami. So I think, you know, we're probably getting a little bit too cute there, but I think it's worth noting. What else do we got going on here on the wave of Waya? That's really it with the big name players. I have the list of like more in-depth guys that you can get a, a feel for uh, on the chart right now. Again, bdge.store forward slash community defenses. So we have Miami against the Jets. They are my top streaming defense this week. I also love Philadelphia against Washington. Taylor Heineke absolutely fucking stinks, and he's banged up. Arizona against Detroit, really good streamer. San Francisco against Atlanta. Long-term view, Philly's actually, Philly's probably the top one because they get Washington, the Giants, Washington again. San Francisco gets Atlanta this week, Tennessee, and then Houston in week 17. So a lot of good options this week on the waiver wire that you could probably stream, but those are four that you should definitely be keeping an eye on. All four are favored to win their games. They're not all at home, but they're all, you know, playing defenses that might as well fucking be at home. All right. Well, that is it for today's waiver wire video. If you have any questions, drop the comments down below. Make sure you hit the button that looks like this down below. It's called the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. We'll be bike tomorrow. What do we got on tap tomorrow? I don't know. My rankings will probably be out tomorrow. Those are also the weekly rankings are in the membership. So if you sign up for the waiver wire article, you'll get the weekly rankings, the dynasty rankings, all that kind of sheesh. All right. I love y'all. I'm out. Thank you.